Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our continuing discussion of inventory cost flows. In this video, we will discuss how Browning can apply FIFO to their inventory merchandise transactions and calculate cost of goods sold for each of their sales and calculate the ending inventory after each sale and at the end of the year. For those of you who are working with the PDF printed out versions of the worksheets, you will need this worksheet available as well as the FIFO worksheet. Your FIFO worksheet looks like this. Browning Company Cost Flow Assumption FIFO. It doesn't make for a very smooth presentation if I have to keep flipping back and forth between the data worksheet and the FIFO worksheet. So for demonstration purposes, I have included the data on each of the cost flow assumption worksheets. The math concepts, the math and the actual concepts for each of these cash cost flow assumptions are very easy. What is difficult for students is staying organized and working in chronological order. So I'm going to give you some rules for staying organized. First of all, take your time and make sure that you work every section in chronological order. And don't try to sell inventory that you don't own yet. So on this sale here, the only cost we can apply is $5.50 because that's the only inventory we had on hand as of January 10th. You cannot apply a cost of inventory on January 10th for inventory that we bought after January 10th. So stay organized, work chronologically, and don't try to sell inventory you don't own yet. This piece of paper is going to use up more room than you actually need, but I'm going to work you through this very methodically to teach you how to stay organized and work chronologically. Each one of these big blocks, there's one, two, three, four, five, six lines in this block, three lines in this block, etc. Each one of these big sections is for a date and for a transaction that happened on that date. Let's get started. We're going to record our beginning inventory in this section. On January 1st, Browning Company owned 4,000 units of inventory that had cost them $5.50. That was the inventory left over from last year. There's no cost of goods sold because we didn't sell anything. So under the ending inventory columns, I've listed 4,000 units at a cost of $5.50 for a total cost of $22,000 for the inventory available for sale as of January 1st. The next thing we're going to do is record the sale of these 2,000 units on January 10th. We're going to use this date block to do that. On January 10th, we sold 2,000 units. Now, I don't care about the price that we sold them for. What I care about is the cost of goods sold. How much did those 2,000 units cost Browning? Well, under FIFO, we apply the cost of the oldest units to cost of goods sold first. Well, we had only one layer of inventory before this sale. So the only price we have available, oldest, newest, whatever, is $5.50 each. So under FIFO, the cost of goods sold 
for the 2,000 units sold on January 10th was 2,000 items at $550 or $11,000 of cost of goods sold. Now what we need to do is to calculate the cost of the inventory that was not sold. We had 4,000 units. We sold 2,000 of them, leaving 2,000 units unsold at the price of $5.50 each, which means that the cost of goods available for sale after the January 10th inventory or January 10th sale is $11,000. Let's test the math. Remember from our formula that we discussed in the last video that cost of goods sold plus ending inventory should equal goods available for sale immediately before this sale. So does the $11,000 cost of goods sold plus the $11,000 of ending inventory after the sale equal the $22,000 of inventory available for sale immediately before the sale? And the answer is yes. So it looks like we did not make a math error. The next thing that happened is another purchase of 1,000 units of inventory on January 17th, and we paid $6 a piece for that inventory. That's going to give us two layers of inventory after this purchase. The 2,000 left over from our beginning inventory plus 1,000 new units that we purchased at a different cost. So to stay organized, you need to bring down into the new date box the old inventory. So I'm going to bring this layer of inventory down to the new date box, and I'm going to do that first. Now I'm going to add the new layer that we purchased on January 17th. After the January 17th purchase, we had two layers of inventory, 2000 at $5.50 each, is our oldest layer and a brand new layer of a thousand that cost us six dollars each for a total of seventeen thousand dollars of goods available for sale after the January 17th purchase. Note that I have been very very careful to keep my inventory layers from the oldest to the newest. The next thing that happened is the March 22nd purchase. The first thing we have to do is bring the old inventory layers down to the new date box. And then we can add the newest layer that we purchased on March 22nd. Why don't you pause the video, add this layer of inventory, you will end up with three layers of inventory after the March 22nd purchase and then total up goods available for sale after the March 22nd purchase. Once you finish, click on the video and check your work. So after the March 22nd purchase, we have three layers of inventory listed very carefully from the oldest to the newest layer and a total cost of $38,000 of goods available for sale as after that purchase. Notice that by carrying down the old layers, I'm staying very organized and I can completely ignore any information in the ending inventory columns above our current date. The next thing that happened is a sale on April 15th. We sold 1,500 units. When you make a sale, it is not necessary to carry down the inventory layers. Just simply record your sale and the cost of goods sold, 
then we will calculate the layers of inventory that are left over after that sale. So in calculating the cost of goods sold for this sale under FIFO, you must remember that we apply the cost of the oldest units first to cost of goods sold. We know that our oldest units are 2000 at an old cost of $5.50 each, and there's enough quantity in this layer to cover our entire sale. So our cost of goods sold is $1,500 times $5.50 each under FIFO. Under FIFO, the cost of goods sold for the 1,500 units sold on April 15th is $8,250. 1,500 units times the oldest cost of $5.50 each. Now we need to calculate the inventory that we still own and keep it in layers. So the oldest layer is the $5.50 layer. We had 2,000 units available. We sold 1,500 of them, leaving 500 units still available at the $5.50 cost. We did not sell any of this layer. So we have all 1,000 of these at a cost of $6 each. And we still have all 3,000 of the items we purchased on March 22nd at a cost of $7 each. Under FIFO, after the April 15th sale, we still have three layers of inventory listed from the oldest to the newest and a total cost of goods available for sale of $29,750. The next thing that happened is a purchase on October 15th of an additional 3,000 units at a cost of $7.50 each. I want you to bring down your three layers of inventory into the new date box, put in the October 15th date for this box, and the purchase of the newest layer. When you pause your video, do that work. When you're finished, come back and check your answer. After the new layer of 3,000 units at $7.50 each is added, to the three older layers, we have a total cost under FIFO of goods available for sale of $52,250. If you did not have this on your worksheet, make sure you understand where you went wrong and fix it before you continue. The last thing that happened during the year is on November 20th, we sold 3,000 units. Go ahead and record the sale and see if you can calculate under FIFO the cost of goods sold and the inventory not sold after the November 20th sale. So pause your video, do that work, then come back and check your work. Remember under FIFO, we must apply the cost of the oldest units to cost of goods sold first. Looking at our layers available, we had 500 units available at $5.50 price. We had 1,000 units available at a $6 cost. But that's not all we sold. We sold 3,000 units. So we need to take another 1,500 units out of the $7 layer. And when we multiply all of that across and add it up, our cost of goods sold under FIFO for the November 20th sale was 19250
So what inventory did we not sell? What was our ending inventory and goods available for sale after the November 20th sale? Well, first of all, we ate up all of this layer. There are none left. We also ate up this entire layer. There's none of these $6 items left after the salt sale. And we had 3,000 units available at a $7 cost. We used 1,500 of them, leaving 1,500 unsold at $7. And we used none of the newest layer. So the 3,000 units are unsold at $7.50. So our goods available for sale after the November 20th sale is 33,000. Let's check the math. Does 19,250 cost of goods sold plus $33,000 of ending inventory after that sale equal the cost of goods available for sale immediately before that sale? And the answer is yes. Now let's do a little accounting magic and test the cost of goods sold for the entire month. So cost of goods sold for the entire year, not month, but year, is $38,500, $11,000 from the first sale on January 10th plus 8250 from the second sale on April 15th, plus 19250 from the last sale on November 20th, equals a total cost of goods sold for the year of 38500 At the end of the year, after our last sale during the year, we had $33,000 of inventory left over. Add those two numbers together and you calculate 71,500, which from our data worksheet is goods available for sale throughout the entire year. Beginning inventory plus the three purchases we made equals goods available for sale throughout the year. Well, that's all for FIFO. When we come back, we'll do the same worksheets but will you apply the cost flow method of LIFO last in, first out? See you next time.